How to build the Black Gates Twin Steam Engine, Part 11, The Assembly Sequence I decided to use O-rings instead of soft packings for both the pistons and the piston rod glands. The gland packing O-rings are made from Viton, which is a much harder material than silicone. You will notice that before I did anything, I applied some lubricating oil to the piston rod gland. There are two ways to do this job. The way that I'm doing it is shown on the screen at the moment, or you could actually put the Viton O-ring onto the piston rod first and then poke it into the gland. And once again, it's very important to lubricate the piston before fitting the silicone piston ring to that. I'm going to do a test fit before I go any further. So I fit the piston to the piston rod and try it in the cylinder and everything seems to be okay. I'm going to use Loctite 542, which is a hydraulic sealant, to just make sure that the piston doesn't vibrate loose. I would not recommend using a retainer because if you need to remove the piston you will have to heat this part to destroy the bond. On a small engine of this type when assembling it it's most important not to over tighten any of the parts and that includes the piston on the thread on the piston rod. If you tighten the piston onto the thread tightly it may actually go out of true. The term finger tight is a good way of describing how tight the piston needs to be on the piston rod thread. Here's a close-up of the piston ring being fitted to the second piston. And once again, before doing anything, plenty of lubrication is required. The tolerances on the piston and cylinder are very tight, and I had to rotate the cylinder cover until I found a position where the piston and piston rod went in and out very smoothly. Time to make some gaskets. I'm going to use some brown paper for the gaskets. And the best way to make the gaskets is to punch out the centre part first. This is one of a set of hole punches I bought a while back via eBay, and I must say that they really are terrible. They don't even punch the holes, so they're a complete waste of time. And quite apart from being rubbish, they're too small anyway for the job that I need them to do. So I think it's a good idea to show how to make your own hole punches. I need to punch a really nice clean hole, which is 9 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And because I'm making two of these engines, I need to punch a total of four holes, so I'm going to make a quick, cheap and cheerful hole punch. I fitted a piece of steel bar that I found in my scrap box, which was part turned anyway, into the three-jaw chuck in my Boxford lathe. It's very simple to make and the end of the bar's already been drilled. I'm using a boring tool from the inside to outside at an angle. This will give a very fine razor sharp edge. The very last turning operation with the boring tool just lifted the edge outwards a bit. Here I'm just cleaning it up with a normal lathe tool, and it's very sharp indeed. That's it, all that remains to be done is to part it off, but I'm not going to let it fall into the chip tray, as that may damage the edge. Here's the finished tool in action, it's really good. It cuts very nice clean 9 sixteenths of an inch diameter holes in this piece of brown paper. By the way, this is one of those envelopes that you buy that hold photographs that says do not bend on the front. And it's absolutely ideal for this job because the cutter goes through into the cardboard and doesn't blunt. In this clip, using a scalpel which is extremely sharp, health and safety warnings etc, be very careful when doing this, I'm roughly cutting the external part of the gasket to shape. The next part of the job is to hold the cylinder cover on top of the cylinder, making sure that the holes in the cylinder cover are aligned with the holes in the cylinder. And while holding the cover in position tightly, I just poke through the holes with a scriber. And the next part of the job is to bolt it all together. I'm using four dome head 6BA bolts. These are very small items, so I really don't want to drop them on the floor. Another health and safety warning, that's two already. It's not a good idea to tighten the bolts with a screwdriver in this position, because if the screwdriver slips, it's going to stick in my hand and hurt a lot. What I'm doing at the moment is using a piece of wet to dry sandpaper just to clean up the port face which had some paint on it. Here's the gasket fitting procedure once again for cylinder number 2. I'm about to poke through the holes with the scriber. You will notice that I didn't even bother trimming the outside edge of the gasket. I'm going to do this later with the scalpel. I decided not to tempt fate and hold the cylinder in my hand tightly as I did previously. This one's been held in my fingers which are not as soft as the rest of my hand. In this clip I'm carefully using the scalpel to remove the excess gasket from around the edge. If you're doing a job like this be very careful, you don't want the scalpel to slip and scratch the cylinder cover, and you don't want to cut yourself either. 
That reminds me, it's nearly spring, and if you're one of my Patreon supporters, it's the 14th of February 2019, Valentine's Day. I think it's time for a romantic verse. Roses are red, violets are blue, I've got an axe and you are going into the acid bath. Romance is not dead and I've cut the spring in half. The sequential order of assembly on this engine is very important. I have the springs, but I've removed the trunnion pins. All I'm doing here is checking that the big ends fit onto the crank pin, which they do. And in this clip I've temporarily loosely fitted the trunnion pins, and everything seems to be okay. And here's where I leave this episode. I will show the special method for fitting trunnion pins to oscillating cylinder engines in the next part. Happy St. Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.